Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Red Light Sports Ramble. As always, my pleasure to come to you this beautiful evening. Funniest thing happened this morning. Those that listen all the time know that I had been debating when should I publish the ramble? When would be more convenient for my listeners? Well, I came to a conclusion that on Mondays, Tuesday, and Wednesday, since I'm not quite sure when I will be done working, I would record in the morning. Thursday, I have my co-host Evan Watallison, not going to change the time of Packer Talk. And Friday, I know I'm done at 6 o'clock. So Thursday and Friday would be evening publishing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, morning. So today I was going to do, and actually started, recording a red light sports ramble and as I do every so often I do a time check to make sure I'm under my 15 minutes so that I can publish to YouTube with no problem well today I'm going I'm going I was talking about the Tigers and the A's I was talking about the Cardinals and the Pirates then BAM it stopped recording well, at 7.30 in the morning, a blocked number called. And so apparently, when I receive an incoming call while I'm recording the Red Light Sports Ramble, it stops my recording. And I will tell you, I was actually upset. I loved what I had talked about, but I didn't have time because I was almost at work. So then I listened to the voicemail telemarketing call. Who in their right mind calls at 7.30 in the morning? Unbelievable. But anyway, a lot to talk about today. A's defeated the Tigers today. I was talking this morning that whoever won game three was going to win the series in five. So I'm going to stick with that. The A's are now going to beat the Tigers in five games. That's what I'm calling. The Cardinals-Pirates game, I thought the Cardinals were going to win based on their playoff experience. Back up against the wall. They are playoff tested. They were going to go out today and win the game and go to game five in St. Louis. Now, what I was also talking about, there is a huge decision for Clint Hurdle. Who is going to start game five? I hope it's not Burnett. If he names Burnett the starting pitcher for game five, the Cardinals win. I know Burnett is playoff tested. I know he's been in the postseason. He has the most experience of any pitcher in the postseason. But he has been getting shelled at Bush Stadium. He does not pitch well in St. Louis. I would throw Garrett Cole on the mound. That young man went out in Game 2, which in my mind was a must-win for the Pirates. Had the Pirates not won game two, they would not be in the situation they're in. I think the Cardinals would have swept them. Garrett Cole has good stuff. He shut down the Cardinals in game two. Now granted, there might be some adjustments, and he may not have as much success in game five. But the way I see game five, or game seven. Yes, skill comes to play. But if we think about it, there is a ton of emotion going on. Just a ton of passion, emotion, will, desire that goes along with the skill. Best part is, Cole has the skill. So let's corral all of that emotion, put it into that man, and let him beat the Cardinals. Just my opinion. 
So I'm not going to make my call on game five until I know who the starting pitcher is. And I will say it today. If Burnett's the pitcher, I pick the Cardinals. If Cole's pitching, I pick the Pirates. Simple as that. The Dodgers are going for the kill tonight. They're going to send Kershaw to the mound. Marlasco, I read the article, is taking it like a man. However, if the Dodgers don't win tonight, I think the Braves take the series. Because now you're going to have to run him out there in Game 5 after he feels slighted for not getting the start in Game 4. I don't care how much of a professional you are. You know that was a kick in the balls to him. He's sitting there going, you don't have faith in me that I can win game four and let Kershaw pitch game one? Again, just my thought. But I'm, my predictions are becoming very easy with these game fours and decisions being made. Now, I think the right move tonight, Buckholt's going for the Red Sox. He crushes the Rays. That series is over tonight. I don't even think it's going to be a ball game. I think it's going to be 4-5. Maybe they score a run. But I think the Red Sox take care of business tonight. And I think Kershaw can get the win against the Braves. But if he doesn't, I think the Braves take game five. So a lot of stuff going on in baseball. Let's move right over to football. I'm not going to get into it tonight because on Thursday with Packer talk and we will talk about the Clay Matthews injury. Evan and I talked about this earlier in the year when Clay Matthews went out of the Redskin game, that defense seemed to go down one notch. And that's all I'm going to say today. The sources say Matthews is out for at least a month. By Thursday, we should have some more information. We should have some more detail. Evan and I will really get into the Clay Matthews injury, talk about how it's going to affect the Packers after what I thought was a pretty solid game. There's some things that I had concerns with, and now with Matthews being gone, I have another concern. But we'll talk about that more in depth on Thursday. I think that's the appropriate time to talk about it. But with football, we went into Sunday with five unbeaten teams. Five. And we left with three. Now, in my upsets, I picked the Colts over the Seahawks. I think the Seahawks are a good team. I just don't think they have all the pieces together. It it looks like they showed it, right? Special teams, offensively, defensively. But I don't think they're playing on the same page right now all together. I think they're a good team. But they're beatable. You know, and I said this last week, they're 4-1 now. But they very easily could be 2-3. Very easily. So hopefully this loss got all the hype away from the Seahawks. And that might be what they needed. They might have thought they were better than they really were. We shall see as we move forward. The other team that lost was the Patriots. I did pick them to go to Cincinnati and win. But I also mentioned Friday that was one of the games where I really had a hard time picking the winner because I wasn't quite sure. I'm going to give that Bengal defense props. Ended Brady's 52-game streak throwing a touchdown. They just dominated that game from start to finish. And I was reading today, that was the third Super Bowl MVP quarterback that they've beaten at home this year. Good job, Cincinnati Bengal defense. I think they may be the team to beat in that AFC North. Now, of course, the game everyone is talking about. Broncos, Cowboys. I know my co-host had picked the Cowboys to upset them. And I said I could see it happening 
but I thought it was going to come down to Romo not being able to burden the pressure of winning that game on his own. And the thing is, he did one heck of a job. He did really well. Career high, franchise record, passing yards. Chucked the ball around, but he made the one mistake. And that's what I was looking at when I picked the Broncos. Romo will make one mistake. Now, did it cost him the game? You can argue yes and no. But the Broncos didn't make any mistakes. And the Broncos utilize and capitalize on every mistake their opponents make. So, is it too early to talk about a perfect season? A team that is averaging almost 50 points a game. I don't think they're going to go perfect. What I found watching that game is there's going to be a team that can go point for point with them and just run up and down the field like a heavyweight fight. Now, it's going to take a game like that. Because as I watched, if you blitz, you got man-on-man coverage. Manning will eat that alive. He doesn't get fooled with scheme. They can run the ball. If you play zone, the receivers are good enough to find the hole in the zone. They're going to score their points. So, if I'm playing them, I've got to have a game plan to go out and try to attack their defense. Now, I know they get Von Miller back. I know they're going to get a healthy champ Bailey back. But I still think even with those two players, there's going to be some areas on that defense that you can attack. And you can go point for point if you play precise. Because I will say after watching, they dismantled a pretty good Cowboy defense. They've been dismantling everybody. And part of it was, well, maybe the defense they played wasn't so great. Anybody could do that, blah, blah, blah. Well, I even said in the Ramble Friday, this is probably the best defense they've played. And they just, I I wouldn't even say they embarrassed them. They just beat them. They took care of business offensively, and that is very scary. So I think what you got to do to beat them is just outscore them. And hopefully you get a break. And what I mean by a break is get a turnover, get a rare interception, get some rare pressure. And I'm going to give credit to the offensive line that I thought was banged up. They're doing a good job protecting Manning. But I don't think they're going to go undefeated. I think they will stumble one or two times during the year. Where it is, I don't know yet. But they will stumble. So with that said, folks, the other two teams, the Saints and Chiefs, I just look at schedules for them. They're playing really well right now. But I I don't see either of them getting to that undefeated mark. It's good work by both of them. Congrats. Both 5-0. Good job. So with that said, folks, that's the ramble for tonight. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you at the next red light. Have a great night.